just a bloke in a bar. What's going on, guys? New segment, new segment, the Golden Beak Reviews. Basically, what I'm going to do is I sit down, I watch a sporting documentary, and then the big reviews it. I'm no professional. I don't know all about the ins and outs, about cinematography, all that kind of stuff. But what I do know is sport. But before we get into the first review, which is season two, the test, the Australian cricket team. Don't forget, February 1st, 6 p.m. We've got country bloke. We've got city bloke shirt, 50% off everything. 6 p.m. February 1st. That's this Wednesday. Be there because not only are the new shirts 50% off, everything on the store is 50% off. But let's get into the chat, shall we? So... The test season two, coming off the massive success of season one. Now, obviously, as you guys know, I am a baby on my cricket journey, a very big baby, if you would, but I, I really did enjoy season one. I really did enjoy season one, so much so that I always recommend it to people that even if you don't know anything about cricket, me, this guy, uh, it is enjoyable, really, really enjoyable. Now, is season two as good as season one? I have to say, no, it's not, but it is still good. It is still good. A couple of things I, you know, first, Kind of stick out it's only four episodes for the whole season whereas obviously i think last year was maybe eight episodes uh, also it was i felt like there was certain bits that may have been left out intentionally not intentionally that were really interesting but let's get straight into it basically starts off with pat coming becoming the captain oh and spoiler alert if you if you want to go see it if you want to go and see it before we get to the spoilers even though it's a documentary and you know what happened <laughs> but you never know with the internet you never know with the internet uh it's good. It's real. It's good. It's definitely worth watching. Anyway, Pat Cummins becomes captain, and obviously Tim Payne he steps down due to the controversy. They, I mean, look, they didn't really go that deep into it. You'd, I, I feel like there are other things that I wish they went deep in. Whereas this one, I kind of feel like there's only like it's already been said. Like, what else could you say about it? It's such like a personal issue. So fair enough that they kind of it, it was emotional for sure. Tim Payne stepping down, Pat Cummins becomes captain, and it's really interesting because it frames the rest of the series where basically Pat Cummins is the next generation where it's a different, it's a totally different breed of athlete. Like they. You can see by the end of it, you come to realize that. Now, I'm not saying cricketers before this because I don't have much history. I'm just going to go off the history of, like, say, footy players. You know, 10, 15 years ago, although there were footy players doing stuff in the community, it was more just kind of like out the, the goodness of their heart. Whereas some of the footy players, and especially cricketers, like, especially, and you really get this from the, the season two, is they're starting to realize that they have a lot of sway and impact on the whole culture not just cricket you know it's not just about being a good cricketer it's important that i do these other things to help positively impact the um you know australia or whatever whether you like that or don't like that that was the kind of messaging that i was kind of getting this is a new generation uh you know what jl did was fantastic but the new guys coming in they they've got their own way of doing things then it gets into carry and head a bit of a bromance that's brewing they're having a couple of skewies talking a bit of cricket absolutely fantastic stuff then it flips almost to like a completely different kind of bromance. You've got Smith and Marnus. Now, it's really interesting. So the boys reckon on the the uh, documentary that initially it was Marnus that was like, you know, chasing Smithy around and wanted to be like him. And then Smithy kind of relaxed a little bit and they reckon that, that Marnus has been so good for Smithy because Smithy's relaxed, relaxed a little bit. And now he loves Marnus more than Marnus loves him. Uh, you know, it's all said in tongue in cheek, but a really good bromance. And also really good to see, you know, the, the, a guy like Smith who he is a different cat. Like we all, we all know he operates differently, but just to mellow out and kind of open up a little bit, which is really, really cool to see. And, and, a, and a young buck like Marnus coming through, being able to do that. Then it gets, I honestly, at this point, I nearly turned the documentary off because it gets to one of the most disgraceful, disappointing, hurtful, makes me angry, makes me disappointed, it makes me ashamed. Mana Slubbershane taking beautiful, traditional Australian melted cheese toasties and he puts them in the fridge to cool them down and has a cold cheese toasty. Now look, to say that I was hurt and shocked at a guy that I absolutely love, I, it's, it's an understatement. It's an understatement. So please, if I ever see that again, I mean, I won't do anything about it, but it'll hurt me. I'll nearly turn the doco off. And all jokes aside, though, any bloke that can, in the Australian side, in front of a test, test cricketers, in a documentary, put melted cheese in a fridge, fair set of cricket balls on him. Fair set of cricket balls on him. But anyway, that was I just had to get that off my chest because seriously, it, it made me sick. It made me sick watching that bizarre behaviour. Uh, 
But yeah, anyway, Marnus and Smithy, they have a great, a great bromance. It's really, really cool to see. And Marnus is just, you can, you can tell he's really good for the, 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 uh, the team or the, the squad because he's got a, a bit of energy, a bit of youthfulness about him, a bit of playfulness about him. And then from the absolute pits, the bottom of the barrel, the lowest of the low, cheese toasties, warm, beautiful Aussie cheese toasties in the fridge. We just absolutely skyrocket out into the universe. Scotty Boland, six far at the G, also known as the Q. Uh, I mean, even though I knew this was coming, even though I watched it happen, just the way they build it up and you hear Paddy Cummins and the selectors deciding should they go Boland or another player, I'm, apologies, I'm forgetting who they were trying to decide between and I think it was Boland's experience at the queue. Uh, and I think also the player that got looked overlooked, you know, it was frustrating for him because he was playing, I think, really well. Anyway, so they just go through each wicket. It, it is honestly some of the best TV you'll ever watch as an Aussie. Like, it is so good. He, you know, obviously, Scotty Boland is the second Australian men's test Indigenous player. So the importance of that is massive. And it's really good to see. I mean, we knew the impact watching it. Like, we knew it watching it. Like, this is so important to the Indigenous community. But then also just to hear him talk about it and seeing him going back home and, you know, hoping to inspire young Indigenous kids to get into cricket. And it kind of... It culminates in kind of a bit of comedy where I think uh, Scotty Boland's dad was trying to rush to the stadium to get to see his last wicket, and he got his wicket so quickly that he didn't he missed the last wicket. Uh, but it kind of wraps really well into so Scotty has his massive massive moment, and it's just you think you're at the highest of highs. You're going, mate, how good is this? Then Usman Khawaja gets called back in due to a head i think head is out with oh i got tested positive for covid maybe apologies if i'm wrong about that Usman comes back in and what's really interesting about like pairing these two together and obviously they're paired because of the timing of it but it's really interesting so so scotty boland does what he does six for the queue and then Usman comes back in and they go in depth about basically you know him thinking that he'd played his last test uh, test, uh, last match of test cricket and he gets called back in and almost it seemed like a kind of a new sense a new a new a new approach to things like what will be will be uh, that's the feeling that i got anyway usman comes back in and goes back to back 100s and you're sitting there going i didn't think this would get any better it did it just got better you go six for at the bloody g okay the q then you go back to back hundreds from usman and it's it's almost like because you know obviously you've got scotty boland representing his indigenous culture which is really important but it's really good as well as usman he throughout the you know the documentary he talks about his culture and how when he arrived to australia that a lot less was known and now more is known and then there's a push i'm not sure from usman but the australian cricket team i'm assuming pat cummins led for the first time in 24 years goes to pakistan and it's a real good representation of what i was talking about earlier where i feel like paddy cummins and this group of players kind of are realizing that it's well for them in their opinion it's it's about more than cricket how can we positively impact the community outside of cricket and that's what the trip to pakistan really does represent all back by as many he does like a a quiz on you know pakistan and all that kind of stuff it's just it's really good stuff really good insight into these players as people and so they wrap up the ashes and then the hammer blow hits justin langer gets the sack and look they did go into it they talked about how the older players were filthy they talked about you know some older players felt that pat cummins should have come out straight away and said something uh i think they probably could have gone into it a bit more i, I don't know i would have maybe it's you know beating a dead horse or whatever but when you've only got four episodes you'd think surely that you could get an episode out of you know the justin langer situation it was huge huge news uh look to be honest i understand both sides from just a, a totally outside looking in i don't know the ins and outs of cricket i understand uh justin langer's mates sticking up for him and saying you know that he just won the ashes he'd won the world cup but i also understand paddy cummins like they do go into it to a degree where there is a sense that, well, they openly say, sometimes it felt some players were walking on eggshells. So I guess they struggle with the volatility, again, all assumptions, but that's the feeling that I got, whereas they wanted a bit more of a stable kind of outlook on, on things, whereas a guy like JL, you know, from what from last documentary, seems really passionate, you know, riding the highs and the lows. And, like, that's what makes some professional athletes just great is that, that ability to write, like, just to be super passionate, um, and then there's some other, you know, other professional athletes that much prefer a steady, calm, it's not as bad as you think, it's not as good as you think, you just stay steady. So it's almost like a clash of worlds or even a clash of generations because this next generation, 
well, this playing group, maybe it's not even generational, it's just this playing group, wanted a, a much calmer approach to things. And so at the moment, the really interesting thing for the Australian cricket side is, is yes, they've had some big wins, big wins and, and life's good. And even though they, they bombed out of the, the World Cup, the T20 World Cup, but they haven't played any of the big dogs yet. India and England, both away from home. And so that'll be the real test for the Australian cricket team. When they play the big dogs, India and England, it's a matter of sometimes when the pressure ramps up and you you need that just bloke right on you and keeping the standards just super, super high, almost like, almost like you are walking around on eggshells. Sometimes that helps in tough situations because you need that person behind you. In saying that, if you've got the right systems and enough professionals that are fully bought in, then you can just rely on them to get the job done. Now, time will tell. It, it'll Time will tell to see how they go against India and, uh, and England. But at the moment, uh, you have to respect Paddy, Paddy Cummins for saying, you know, you're sticking up for your mates like I'm sticking up for my mates. And you, even if you disagree with Paddy, if it, that's what you want out of your captain. That is what you want out of your captain. Uh, so, you know, he seems like a guy that he'll go down with his playing group, which is, again, that's kind of what you want uh, from your captain. And also a really interesting guy, Paddy Cummins. He, he seems quite well educated. He takes you through all the books that he's reading. And um, there is definitely a sense of like more than cricket. I know some people feel like it should just be about cricket, but you know, it's his choice and, and he seems to stand firmly behind it, which I, I can respect for sure. So anyway, we get over to Pakistan and you know, it's just really interesting to see the difference, you know, I guess in countries and the issues that they're going through. They literally lock down the whole city. They don't see a single car. They get off the plane, I think around midnight or late at night. They don't see a single car the whole way to their hotel. And then they're not allowed to leave their hotel room. And so because they're not allowed to leave their hotel room, they get given essentially whatever they want. And so one of the boys gets, you know, a golfing, uh, one of those big screens that you can golf into. Uh, some of the other boys get, I think Manus gets a coffee machine. And um, then uh, a lot of the boys get PlayStations. And look, Paddy Cummins big fan i'm a big fan of paddy cummins i think he's a fucking gun cricket player might be the worst call of duty player i've ever seen he actually got scared like of dying in the game like physically was doing these ones so it is they do say in the documentary it's the one thing he's bad at but he's really fucking bad really bad uh but uh all jokes aside it, it's good to see again what i love about the documentary it humanizes these larger than life players like you know paddy cummins australian captain and he's sitting there he's terrible at call of duty you know we all most young people have played call of duty or played a, you know a video game so it's really good at humanizing them then they head over to sri lanka and this is the emergence of, of cam green has an absolute blinder and you just see the future potential of a guy like cam green as an all-rounder and also just his ability as a youngster to handle the pressure go to sri lanka and this is where i guess you're more focused on what is going on in sri lanka because as they're playing literally as they're playing there's massive protests against the prime minister uh, i think it's called prime minister of sri lanka and you can like literally just to down from the ground so you can hear the protests going. And I guess, again, it really does put into focus. And I think, you know, I'll wrap this all up with what I said earlier that it's, there's a lot, this generation seem to be a lot more aware of outside of cricket and, and the importance of, of, you know, sending positive messages and, you know, helping struggling communities and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of like really brought it to a head by seeing a country that is going through just, really really unfortunate stuff um and you know how important it is for guys like scotty Boland and usman and, and then the aussie boys to be role models for the young kids coming up um because we just live in such a beautiful country we're so lucky um but yeah so that, that kind of i really feel season two as i said not good not as good as season one mainly because um you know we obviously we lost to india for the first time uh in australia and we didn't see any of that footage. I thought we could have seen more JL footage. I wish it could have been a little bit longer, but it is good. It is really good. And it is. it does seem to be, we are taking a step into the next generation of Australian team led by Paddy Cummins, huge fan, huge fan of all the boys. There's not really anyone that comes off as bad, like just the boys, it was, it was, it was fantastic. I'm gonna give season two, the tests on Amazon, 3.5 golden beaks out of five. 3.5 golden beaks out of five. As I said, if it was longer, it would have been up the four, probably would have been around the four, uh, but really, really good watch, guys. Check her out. 
That's Golden Beak's first ever show. We'll be reviewing other sports documentary in the future. Don't forget, February 1st, 6 p.m., 50% off everything for 50 hours, brand new bloke shirts, and I'll see you next time.